Hi, welcome to the breakout room for uh, volunteerism. Um, my name is David. I'm part of um, last year I came with Costume Call. This year I'm going with my own cam. I've been a part of Rainbow Aces and I'm a part of the, the Burning Man New York loosely group of friends that collaborate in a lot of things together. We go to regionals together, uh, you know, fundraisers, parties, art parties. It's a, it's a great community that um, is very active all year round and, and um, um, we wanted to talk a little bit about that, about the, the importance of volunteering, the, the things that, you know, the Black Rock City is built by all of us and um, takes a lot of work. So we wanted to talk a little bit about that and share some experience from uh, some CAM leaders and project leaders that um, do all this work year round. So um, do you want to get us started, Sharma Mao? Yeah, sure. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Chairman Bao. I'm uh, the lead for Bao Chica Wow Wow, uh, also uh, Bao Village. This will be, uh, I did my ninth burn um, last year. Uh, <coughs> there's a camp about 150 people. Uh, there's six camps in the village. Uh, we also have like two R cars in there, as well as a, a solar camp. Um, happy to be here. Our, our gift to the playa is uh, the steamed pork buns and egg custard buns and red bean buns. We brought uh, 8,000 last year. Um, one of the highlights is we got uh, rid of about 2,500 before the gates opened. Wow. Um, and we're able to give them out to all the, the artists and the builders uh, and gate crew. And um, that was, that was really fun. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, um, Leon. Sure. Um, hey everybody. <clears throat> um, Leon Feingold. I'm the camp lead and one of the co-founders for New York dangerous. Um, I also am one of the, uh, two co-founders with one of my other uh, campmates of the House of Good Deeds. It's a 501c3 spin-off of New York Dangerous that encourages people to translate the 10 principles into the default world and do good things and improve the world through action. Thank you. So um, I wanted us to start, or, or I, I'm going to put up, um, I wanted us to start with talking about you know, what does it look like to you kind of like in the, in the, you know, I imagine your camps, especially with so many people and so many activities year round. Um, can you tell us about how does it actually look like in the, in like the, I don't know, your leadership structures, how do you coordinate with your people? How do you come up with new initiatives or, or a little bit of like, how, uh, how do you make this happen? Um, I don't know if either one of us wants to start, but I guess since I'm already speaking, I'll continue. <laughs> Um, New York Dangerous usually brings between 70 and 100 people, uh, 110 people to Playa every year. Um, we have, uh, you know, uh, several leads each year. It rotates. Uh, I'm one of the people who's always there. We have a recurring kitchen lead. We've got infrastructure lead. We've got a power lead. Each of them is responsible for the people beneath them. Uh, we work together um, and we do a, a large part of what we do between now and the time we burn is bringing people in that we think are gonna be chainsaw unicorns. For those who don't know, uh, that is the opposite of a sparkle pony. We wanna mm -hmm. make sure that everybody understands they are part of the success of the camp and we want everyone to work together to be able to make the camp work. We're not as food oriented, although we do provide 24 seven candy through strangers with candy. Uh, the theme of New York Dangerous is things your mother warned you about. So running with scissors uh, is a pretty popular relay race we do every year, but passing off scissors instead of a baton. Uh, we have a playing with fire booth where we use the sun's rays and magnifying glasses to burn necklaces that people can keep. Uh, we have a daily discussion group called Talking to Strangers. We have a shooting gallery called You'll Put Your Eye Out. Um, our goal is just to focus on daytime interactivity. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if there's any more specific issues you want to talk about that. Uh, oh, and like the House of Good Deeds is, mm -hmm. is more of a, a New York-centric thing, but we hope to expand to other cities around the world uh, by 2024. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. I think uh, that's very similar to the camp structures that, that we have and that I've seen with other people, like very autonomous, self-directed and empowered campers that are that are leading the initiatives that they decided to take on. Yeah, we, we don't assign shifts. We give people the chance to sign up for the things that interest them the most. So if they're really into, for example, um, leave no trace, then they can be in charge of or take some shifts with moving. If, there's, if they're passionate about food, then they can make a meal one day. Um, and if they have any experience, we put them in a leadership uh, position or if they 
they are particularly passionate about it, they could take a leadership role uh, or they can just fill in wherever they'd like to. But we, we want to make sure that everybody is involved and everybody is, is committed and feels that they are integral to the success of the camp. Beautiful. Yeah, um, very similar, uh, Leon. I think uh, one thing that's great about the symposium is very similar pathways. And, you know, I, I love the, um, the therapy that we can provide to one another, too, in terms of <laughs> we're, we're not alone. Um, mm. So in that vein, I ended up just like pasting sort of our timeline. Uh, that might be help, helpful. Uh, I put it in the chat. It's basically a Google Doc that kind of shows the how we think about it in terms of uh, off season, you know, when we're planning before Playa, on Playa, and after. Um, we essentially uh, evolved from um, from our first time just being a part of a camp called Bacchanalia. This is 2012 to then being part of the French Quarter in 2013. 2014 was the first time we sort of started our own camp, um, and that was about like 60 of us. Um, you know, over the years, we've iterated uh, from, you know, one overall lead to uh, a more distributed team uh, to what we kind of do now, which is more of like a, we call them a bow council. And so a council of people that have been to the burn before, uh, you have to have been uh, with the camp as well. Um, and we sort of break up our roles into hospitality, operations, um, you know, uh, strike, build, uh, multiple categories where, you know, one person sort of, uh, actually two people lead that specific area. Um, in terms of the, the camp, we've had about 463 people that have camped with us ever. Uh, so we call them like alumni and anyone that's camped with us ever is able to come back unless they were blacklisted or did something crazy. And we've only had like two people, uh, that have, have violated those terms. Um, and so when we send out our planning um, doc or we're, hey, you want to come this year, they'll sign up and see if they want to come. Um, you know, from there, we essentially then uh, realize like, all right, who's coming and who wants to bring what we call a baby bow? Uh, so if you want to get in the camp, you have to be sponsored from someone that will vouch for you, that will take on your responsibility of onboarding you into the camp culture and kind of what we're doing. Um, you know, I think it's really important that you have that sort of direct relationship there. Um, you know, that's like your big brother, or big sister, or someone that can like really take you under their wings. Um, you know, from there, we, we usually get started 100 days before the burn. Uh, we try not to get started too early. Otherwise, it, it, I think we need enough decompression from the previous year where you just want to get as far away from that and you know, some time to uh, recharge. Um, but when we're hundred days away, that's when we really start kicking in high gear. And that's when we get together and we do more events together. That's where we'll uh, go and, you know, clean out the trailers and the containers and the storage. Um, you know, that's when we'll think about, um, you know, the, the activity and the theme and how to create interactivity to, to ensure we're aligned with that theme. Um, you know, and, and according to that timeline, that's kind of how we, we work through, um, uh, the, the responsibilities from there. Um, happy to elaborate more, you know, transition, but just give you an overview of how we manage the camp and, and what's going on. Nice. Yeah. I, I love that time. And I checked it for a second and yes, we had a similar, um, um, I guess approach the, the, I guess different cities also allow, like in New York, we have uh, a lot of camps that start at the same time. So sometimes we do happy hours that do, uh, where like new burners can come and meet other burners, uh, do like cam, what's it called? like dating, speed dating and stuff. So, but, but yeah, I, I, I love what you're saying. And definitely having the trust in the system and like the mentorship and that culturation is super important to, to have that cohesive unit because there's, there's a lot of problems. And I wanted to say something that you, you mentioned at the beginning too, like this emotional part of it. Um, we have, I mean, it, it's not, I mean, it's no secret. There, there's sometimes, you know, fights or disagreements or, or, or things that happen that, that require... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like an adult in the room sometimes to intervene and, and help uh, mediate those, those circumstances. Have you had experiences like that? And, and how, do you, how do you keep the emotional safety of your camp alive? Yeah, I mean, I, I can start with that. Um, 
we've had two people that we've we've blacklisted mainly because of violence against another camp member um you know in the terms of fighting and um not resolving it in a, a manner that you know we could be adults um you know when that happened we did get together we talked about it we separated people and you know we were able to kind of get to the heart of it uh i think it's tough when um later in the week as people become way more tired and uh fuses are shortened temperatures are heated um it, it can be really tough so how we've sort of reframed that is um Every day there is a camp, uh, we call them a day captain, and then we have uh, a night lead. And uh, those two people sort of are the go-to uh, of, of what's going on. And when shifts change, you sort of have your like clipboard, like, all right, what's happened? Who's coming in? Who's checking what's going on? Have there been issues to keep some continuity going? And, you know, there is a section there is like, hey, is there a problem or do we need to talk to somebody? And the camp leads can also look at that at the end of the day to see, okay, who do we need to talk to? What's going on? Because inevitably there's going to be problems. Um, it's just whether you have a mechanism for people to come together and talk about it and ultimately hug it out. I think that's kind of where you want to end up. Um, and if it, it doesn't work out, then you kind of agree to disagree and then like have the best burn that you can. And then like, you know, part ways. Um, but that's been, you know, hasn't had that. We haven't do that too many times. Uh, I'd say New York Dangerous has been very lucky in that we haven't uh, actually had many incidents of note on Playa. Um, we have also, uh, we do maintain a, a blacklist of people who are no longer welcome at our events or camping with us could be um, multiple reasons for that, but uh, we've been very lucky on Playa. Uh, we did once uh, many years ago have a couple that started fighting as many couples do once they get to Black Rock. Uh, and then it got to the point where it was physically uh, violent and concerning. So we had one of the people move to uh, open camping. Um, and those people are not welcome to camp with New York Dangerous again. Um, there are also, of course, other people that uh, over the years have proven themselves uh, unwelcome. And we simply just don't invite them to, uh, to camp with us. And uh, one of the things that I think that camps could do a better job of is sharing information across camps. Uh, rather than reinvent the wheel, um, like, for example, that idea of having, uh, you know, like a, a report sheet that uh, the night and the, and the morning captains look at. That's a cool idea. We've never considered that. But we also have a lot of things that we do in place uh, that maybe other camps can learn from as well. I guess it's one of the good things about the symposium. But I do think it would be really good for camps in major areas like San Francisco, like L.A., like Chicago or, or uh, Atlanta and New York to have more in-person interaction between not just for parties, but between the leads, I think it would be really helpful to have more ideas to share like this. Cause I think that's really, really good idea. That's a very good point. And it, and it um, ties into like a little question that I had at the beginning, like, where do you learn these things? Because a lot of camps that I talk to, they have come to like similar conclusions, but, but they've never spoken to one another. And I just wonder like, how does this information propagate and how can we do it more intentionally? And, and I mean, I know this impulsion helps a lot, but, but in general, I guess it's not always, um, I mean, super easy to, especially let's say there's camps too that like people, like leadership leaves, then new people come in, they don't know how to run things. So there's, how do you have like processes on which you document and share this information internally and, and, and with other camps? Um, at least, well, those, there's two questions there. One is how do you maintain uh, a flow from year to year to year if you have people that come, people that leave? Uh, last year was horrendous for so many camps, largely because uh, the weather was just awful. Uh, the dust, the, the heat, the, the everything. Plus we were three years off. Most of us who hadn't gone to Renegade um, had just been very rusty. A lot of people who were in the camp uh, in positions of leadership had just decided to do other things over the intervening three years. So we had a bit of a brain drain. Um, the people that were there were, um, were great, but we were also missing a lot of the institutional knowledge. One of the things that we ask everyone to do who leaves the camp is to pass along uh, in uh, an established format, uh, spreadsheets, uh, Google Docs, files, everything that would help their replacement take over their job and ask that they be available um, to, to have conversations with whoever takes over that role 
in previous and sorry in future iterations of the camp so we've uh we've been very good with that we've had a lot of people like i said who have decided to no longer camp with us for one reason or another but they've all to to a person been very good about passing on that information so that the future leads can take over uh last year was super challenging largely because one of our main our, our main build lead had his bus break down an hour outside reno and it never made it to the playa he was supposed to be running our build in Reno from Tuesday on and he didn't show up until right before we left for Playa. So we had to press a lot of first years into service. Tempers were short, things happened. It was not pretty. Uh, this year is going to be very different. And I think uh, one of the things we can do is try to educate more people as backups, uh, especially if we're relying on first years, make sure they understand what they're getting themselves into and uh, make sure that there's redundancy in some of the lead levels. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, I echo a lot of that. I, uh, I, I I forgot how to like tie knots. I was like, "What? Why can't I get this knot down?" I was like, "Oh, it's been a few years." Um, and you know, I had a lot of those moments. Like we were just all really rusty, and you know, we just lost a lot of time this year or last year uh, to the dust. Um, and so. I think it, it was prudent for us also to just cut things and know that you just, it's, it's not going to happen. You're, you're, you're that, act, that activity is not going to happen. Let's just be okay with not making that uh, a thing. Um, you know, in terms of continuity of like passing on the torch, we have, um, we have a camp binder. Uh, that binder has everything that has been digital into a printed form that's there. Um, that binder usually has like when people are coming, when people are leaving, what car do they have, uh, license plate number. So we just know like, oh, if someone's blocking something, we just know where to go to. Um, it also has like the, uh, the acts of service or chores uh, when people are doing what they need to be doing, as well as, um, you know, anything that relates to the, our bow service and, and whatnot. Uh, it goes in tutorials and even how to set up a yurt, like Ikea style. So like if people need to like figure things out, they can look at it and understand. We even have like stuff like how to turn on a generator and like how to dispose of like, how do you like put a lag nut in? And like, it, it's just like this whole how to um, for people because uh, we try to assume if you're just brain dead and you just need to go back to the uh, binder, you can find out what to do there. Um, and oftentimes we have someone that takes a lead on that uh as like the historian on bringing the stuff from the year before updating it for the current year and then being able to to have that on on hand on site in a printed format um you know in terms of like uh other hacks uh we've actually been cool in like getting some other veterans from other camps uh you know people have been burning for five six years that like just wanted to find a new camp and we're like, Hey, welcome with open arms and, you know, come on in. And through that process, uh, it was cool to learn how, Oh, th this is how they think about EVAP. Uh, this is how they think about showers. This is how they think about, you know, compost. Um, you know, those types of things are, are helpful. Um, you know, sticky back, you just posted the hive, the hive's great. We're really trying to get up the speed on like solar and like going through some of those solar classes are great. Uh, going through the, the playa, like the forums, uh, are awesome. You know, there's just so much information that has been said before that you just kind of go in and find. Um, yeah, th that's helped keep some, co some continuity. Nice. I love that. Uh, I wanted to add to like Reddit and Facebook has lots of groups for like local cities and team camp organizers. I love the Hive. It's been a great resource. There's a uh, Hive also has great resources for um, riot sustainability, solar, and, and it's been... Um, I mean, I, something that excites me a lot about since I joined Burning Man, you know, you go to Burning Man the first year and you feel like, oh my God, this, this is the place where like everybody's like me. I'm finally, I finally can be like myself. And then you get back to the default world and it's kind of like discouraging sometimes. So, so being able to find the opportunity to have like, you know, people like leaders that are working year round, it, it, it makes a significant difference to everybody. So it, it's, it's beautiful to see like more groups coming out, more tools, and, and we hope to see, I mean, it's my hope to see, like you were saying, like last year was super hard and it, it made a lot of learnings for this year. Uh, I'm super encouraged for this year because I feel like um, we're, we're not going to be rusty anymore and, and we got all the hard things away and, and this year is going to be um, spectacular. I wanted to ask, um, 
then like one, I guess maybe like final question before we open up to the audience and then we can we can uh, have your participants on mute if they wanna ask questions and, and share with us. Um, besides volunteering for your CAM and your initiatives, uh, how do you encourage your, your, your CAM mates or your, or your teammates to, to join, you know, to participate in other, you know, positions between the Black Rock City or, or in other things or with other CAMs or um, like, you know, do you include that as part of your acculturation and how do you get more people to like, you know, help us make Exodus work? I guess neither of us wanted to take that. Um, oh. uh, okay. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it's all a lot of work, no matter what it is. Um, as as anyone who's had any responsibility on flying knows, it's it's never it never just happens. I mean, no matter what, no matter what you do, Burning Man will happen. But if you have a responsibility, it's like you just look very differently at the way everything works. Um, I don't know that there's a simple answer to that, other than making sure everyone knows what their mm -hmm. roles are. And, um, you know, it helps having people know what to expect. So uh, one of the things that I think uh, Chairman Bao mentioned was bringing in people and veterans from other camps. Uh, New York Dangerous in the beginning was very kind of gateway drug to Burning Man. -y. We used to bring in a lot of virgins every year, uh, which was great, but it's also very challenging, especially when we didn't have a lot of processes in place um, and we didn't really know how to make sure that everyone was properly prepared, especially with people from out of town. Because if they're in New York, they can come to our events. We can kind of look over their shoulders and make sure that they're getting along, see who has different skills, also see who has different personalities uh, and figure out who will be good as part of a team with other people. Uh, and if people are coming in from out of town, in fact, we, we have people from you know, many countries and, and places around the world. Um, we've been pretty lucky with that, but we have to, we've learned that we need to take extra steps to make sure that those people are prepared, that they're not here to, to sparkle, they're here to work and fill a role. Because if everyone does what they're supposed to do, everything goes off with as few hitches as is reasonable. So I'm not sure if that specifically answered the question, but I think it's important to mention. Yeah, it's like, you know, there's a 80-20 rule. I feel like it's like a 595 rule and it comes to the burn, like, only 5% of your group like really wants to like take on the leadership, take on the, um, uh, the pain, I guess, in a lot of ways. Um, but I also think that's where the most reward is. And oftentimes the, the people that really step up, you have this sense of um, respect as well as uh, knowledge that not many people do. And you start understanding how the magic works. Um, I think that's kind of one of the, the coolest things about the symposium and like talking to other leads, like to make this magic work, it just takes an incredible level of uh, participation and volunteering. Um, and when you sort of get them inspired about it and show that, that magic, like for everybody in our camp, you have to go gift bow. You have to go and like do the thing that we are here to do. And, you know, ultimately they are, they're super happy about it. Um, you got to get them inspired about it. And what's cool is we've now seen some campers now go volunteer for, for placement or volunteer um, at the org and, you know, start making more relationships with our camps to try to, you know, learn and bring that knowledge back and, and share with each other. Um, so there's also the sense of like, hey, like, go learn this stuff and then go tell us how, how we like can incorporate it into to what we do. Uh, so there's a lot of learning uh, in that. Um, so one thing that I've, I've been doing is trying to visit the 360. Um, we got a couple containers there. Uh, we did the solar uh, workshop there. Excited to do a couple more. Um, you know, really trying to find the veins where we align and, and want to grow and put just bodies there and like figure out how we can, um, you know, learn from others that have, have done it. One of the things I do want to, if it's okay for me to jump back in, I'm um, talking about volunteerism. One of the things that I, I'm really proud of New York Dangerous, um, we have a spinoff 501c3 called the House of Good Deeds. Uh, it was founded by myself and my late wife, Yuan. Um, she and I went to camp with New York Dangerous in 2015 and 2016. We got engaged at the end of that year. and we found out, unfortunately, she was diagnosed with terminal cancer uh, the day after we got engaged, actually. Um, and long story short, uh, people came from all over the world to help us, and we started the House of Good Deeds in the vein of the 10 principles of 
Burning Man to translate into the default world, um, the power that people have to make a difference because people came from all over the world to help us. This was our way of paying it forward. And since then, uh, this was back in 2016, we incorporated in 2017, and the House of Good Deeds has grown into one of New York City's largest uh, volunteer-run organizations. We've rescued over 10, 100,000 pounds of, of food, clothing, and shoes, and housewares, and given it away for free. Decommodification, gifting, community effort. Like We try to incorporate all these things uh, into what the House of Good Deeds does. And before you can camp with New York Dangerous, we require you attend at least three events and be sponsored, similar to Chairman Bao's camp. Uh, but one of the camp events must be something that New York Dangerous sponsors. Every month we do a dangerous event like, you know, paintball or um, rock climbing or axe throwing. Uh, in February, we're going to be um, jumping in the Coney Island water with the Coney Island polar bears. Um, and one social event could be like a, a happy hour. And you must volunteer with the House of Good Deeds at a community event, contributing towards the benefit of whatever community you want to help. Like uh, we figure those three things will give us a good idea about who they are and uh, the kind of people they are, especially in an organized volunteer event is really helpful. And it also gives them the chance to really make a difference uh, and understand that New York Dangerous is more than just, you know, a party camp We're we're really a family and we really want to go out of our way to volunteer and, and make a difference, not just on Playa, but around the world 24 seven, 365. That's really beautiful. Thank you for sharing both. I think, the the approach that you that you mentioned, which um, like like encouraging people to participate and encouraging people to lead and encouraging people to see behind the scenes will naturally lead them to be <clears throat> one a part of all of this, which which I think works much better than than trying to like remind people all the time like you need to do this. If you don't sign up for this, the event is not going to happen and stuff like that. Because because the, the I don't like I love this approach from love and from from understanding that we have a collective power to change society and and. And we, you know, if we get to use it, and that's like the giant privilege that we have. Um, I wanted to open up for the public. If any of you wants to ask questions, I think you can raise your hand and you mute yourself, or if you prefer to ask in the chat. Yeah. The session is scheduled to go for forty more minutes, and then so uh, it's like it's depending on on uh, the you know see see what what ideas you have that we can help. You okay. With. We have a very intimate panel today. Did, did you attend any of the previous sessions today? Have you, uh, well, we were participants. Have you had uh, uh, any comments in so far the, the, the symposium? I was cleaning my room today, so I didn't get a chance to check it out. Although I have uh, every year participated to some extent. This is my first year being a panelist. So. Hello, everyone. Yeah. I just uh, would like to say hi. If I'm actually uh, connected from Italy right now. I didn't know about that. Leon just uh, sent me the link. So i just catching up right now. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to listen to what you have to say. Um, and hi, everybody. <laughs> Patrizia is our kitchen lead with New York Dangerous. Patrizia, do you have any questions for me or Chairman Bao about volunteerism? Oh, by the way, Patricia is also the director of donations and a volunteer organizer for the House of Good Deeds. She's one of our board members. Oh, awesome. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. I love to put uh, to be involved and uh, put my hands on uh, uh, things to do, you know, uh, helping communities. So um, I'm here to listen what you have to say, guys. And uh, if I have any question, I'll, uh, I'll jump in. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, and I'm I'm Ben. Um, I'm currently oh, driving, so oh. not, not super safe. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm one <laughs> of the, the co leads for Blast uh, Theme Camp Sustainability, and uh, for and um, yeah, so we we did get a lot of volunteers to go around and visit camps to talk about theme camp sustainability, and we try to do some off playa stuff too. So cool to hear your your suggestions for getting volunteers going. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to say hi. Um, I was in a session with uh, Leon earlier. Um, my name is uh, Michael Endipaya. I'm colorblind. Um, I saw this. Uh, it's my first time um, doing the camp symposium. And uh, my interest is in um, getting uh, more involved and getting, uh, you know, gaining more understanding of how to um, 
form together a camp and bring it to the Paya. Um, I've been a uh, co-lead before uh, for Lunar Disco based out of uh, Santa Rosa, California. And then last year I joined uh, Post Office at six. So I'm here to learn. Thank you. Um, yeah, I always bug if you have any prompts to help us guide the 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 um, what's cool? mm. um if you I guess if you have more questions from the audience, I have a uh, lot of questions. So uh but uh but uh we um mm, or I wanted to say, or if you know something that that I guess from the from the audience and from we we've heard on the symposium today, what do you think? is you know maybe for you or for the people that that were with you what like you know the the like the value of volunteerism you know what 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 makes you do this because you we know it's it's a lot of work <laughs> and 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 we value it a lot but but you know is there uh you know tell us more about what 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 brings you into this work and how do you how do you you know kind of like sell that to the people that follow you from a Burning Man perspective, the thing that melted my brain the most was that this wasn't like a big corporate sponsored event. Like everything I saw there that melted my brain, whether it was an art piece or a class or an interaction or a massive wall of trampolines or whatever, uh, or an octopus that rolled around and breathed fire. Um, like everything that happened there was just because somebody made it happen. Like nobody was spending millions of dollars as an influencer, especially not when I first started, you know, 10, 11 years ago. This was an amazing, magical place that happens specifically because people step up. And without people stepping up, the magic doesn't happen. So as long as we can make people understand that, like the old thing about Burning Man, you're not, you know, you're not, you're not spectators, you're participants. And that includes every aspect of life. So if you want to have an amazing burn, you 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 have to get your hands dirty and get involved and that kind of is the lesson that i took from my first burn and i've tried to inculcate that in every one of our campers ever since and everyone that i've met so volunteerism in the default world is just a way of making things happen and improving the world just like participating in burning man makes the burn happen i'm so fired up Got yeah, like goosebumps, Leon. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Um, yeah, for, for me, a lot of it's around community. I, I love uh, the people that we camp with. And um, what's awesome is the, a lot of those relationships uh, are strengthened on Playa and turn out to be even you know better in the default world. Um, we've been, we've had like 10 couples that have gotten married from the camp now. Wow. It's, I think it's one of the best stats. Like we've have literally officiated like three weddings from the camp. Um, you know, during the pandemic, when things shut down, we were still able to gather as a, a tight group in different groups. We had people move in with another. We had, you know, that became roommates. We've had, um, you know, people that got, you know, were sick that you could bring chicken soup to. It, it just like, I think that's one of my favorite things that, um, bringing people together and having a strong community uh, really sort of cements uh, itself in, in on Playa. Um, and I think the second thing is like uh, to your point on, on participation, there, there's this concept that you can manifest your imagination and it's just like to what stretch that you want to do that. And, um, and to, to extend like how many people can you bring to bear to, to make that happen? You know, when you look at, the the man or the temple or any of these big installations um it, it all manifested from an original idea to to put in the work to, to get to happen that that is extremely inspirational to see and um the thing i love is every year you can kind of keep stretching and improve and like try something new and um leveraging off the learnings and everything that you had previously uh although i think this year we're going to pull back and like chill a bit but in, 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 I think we, we want to just take a, a moment, but yeah, we, you can really go, go ham um, and, you know, to, to manifest and create whatever you, you want to do. I love it. I both, um, I had a, like, it, that's a very common sentiment. I, I feel that, that a lot of like camp leaders and volunteers and people share, like there's 
like a shared sense of um you know community for sure like i met my wife she's hiding under the camera uh i met my wife we had a burn and then we moved in together and you know we know so many cases of uh safe houses like people finding their boys people finding like confidence people doing things that we, we've had leads that, that before they, they like, you know, join the group or, you know, when they show up to the first happy hour, they're super quiet, shy in the corner. They don't know whom to ask. And then they get to Burning Man and they're leading a kitchen or something. And they're so happy and so proud because they're like, I never imagined in my life that I would get to do this. And I just gives me show. Like, it's such a beauty. Like, it, 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 it lets you, it allows you to create exactly as you said, like manifest your own reality. And then if you have, or you know, in my personal case, and I know many friends that it also helped them. Like, it, like it feels like if I have a skill that I want to develop, if I want to become more responsible, if I want to learn how to uh, um, work better with people, if I want to learn 3D sketching, like volunteering and volunteerism gives us the opportunity to to have the opportunity to that. Because where else do you go to learn how to weld or something? So, <laughs> so it is a uh, it is um, to me and community the word that you mentioned to, to me is the most important thing i think burning man is is m- much more than the, the little party that was in the desert it's a it's a global community now I, I heard this morning that there's been more participants at um there's been um like the global regional network of regional burns has as many participants now as as black rock city so it's like a like a big milestone like miami burn two weeks three weeks ago was the second largest burn I think with 8,500 participants. So, so Burning Man now it's, 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 you know, 10 years ago, I guess it was more hypothetical that Burning Man is a year round thing. Today is like in New York, there's several bars that are owned by burners. So you go there and it's a safe space. They have test strips. So you, you can feel, you can feel like you're connected to everybody like all year round. And, and that's, that's, you know what I'm saying? Like what keeps me plugged into the, the community. Um, we have, oh, then, um, and then, and I guess on the same note, if you wanted to like share some other, or, you know, maybe like your own prompts, what is something that, you know, you would like to say on the panel that we haven't touched on yet? One of the things that I think prevents people from volunteering uh, is that they don't think they can make a difference. And one of the things that I've learned from seven years now of, uh, of being involved with the House of Good Deeds. I mean, I've always been a volunteer, but actually running an organization, just like, you know, running a camp, you learn different things because you see things from different perspectives. Um, But one of the things I've learned is that it's incredibly easy to make a difference uh, in your community with a person. I mean, you can do a simple thing that that doesn't inconvenience you and it'll make a world of difference. Could be complimenting somebody on a choice they made, could be picking up a piece of trash, putting in the rubbish bin, could be anything really. Um, it's, It's so easy to improve the world with just a little bit of effort. And then if you decide to work together with other people, again, it doesn't need to be anything really complicated. Um, it's so easy to make a positive difference. And I think people don't understand how easy it is or uh, how much of an impact they can have. So one of the things we try to teach through the, the House of Good Deeds, again, um, is just get involved, get your hands dirty, do something, participate, come up with ideas. Some people are ideas people, some people are graphic designers, some people, Uh, are really good at moving things. Some people have a knack for sorting donations and people, you know, everyone has different skills. um, But I think everyone can make an oversized difference bigger than even they think they can. Even, even I'm sure if I put a little bit more effort in, even I could do something more than I have before. It's just, it's, it's almost addicting in a different way from most of the substances of Burning Man. Um, But it's, there's something really special about being able to make a real difference instead of just instant gratification and like meaningless accomplishments that, that seem to pepper our days outside of, you know, these conversations. So I just, one of the things I just want to say is people, everyone has the opportunity to make a difference every day and it's not very hard. Beautiful. Do you want to add something about, or I'm going to add a uh, Kim Bass as a question. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, the, I think the on the other end of it, maybe I'll connect the dot is like, you know, making that difference and uh, feeling the impact of that is is really circular in a way that makes you want to do more. And I think that that like connecting that moment is super important. And, you know, for us, um, 
our gift to the playa or just feeding the playa. We wanted to feed our, our 10% of the playa. That was our original goal. Um, and I think like you're at this point where you're giving out the stuff, but like the real gift is their gratitude back to you. And I think that's kind of where um, if you can get that, that, that positive cycle going, then you can really get people hooked. Beautiful. I'm going to uh, Kimba. If you want to mute yourself, Anna. May I, may I add something? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I would like to add something actually related to what um, you were saying before. Uh, can remind me your name. You were speaking before me just for a moment. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just uh, um, talking about uh, the... Uh, uh, the, uh, the the connection that you can create it through uh, volunteering. Um, you, it, it's, you say that you wanted to, you love feeding at least 10% of Playa. Uh, for me, uh, coming from uh, from Italy, we love uh, uh, being together like, uh, in the kitchen, uh, like, uh, like on, around the table and uh, eating. Uh, and eating together. And uh, in, in, you realize that the, uh through volunteering uh even in, you know in the kitchen you have uh a lot of uh, you bond a lot uh, together uh, i and uh, and and after uh, just uh, having uh, all the trouble they can have sometimes on playa you looking forward to see uh adventures so by your tired and anything that you can you can find you just want to go home and uh, and meet your family and being, uh, you know, together around the table, right? And, and it just like a, it, it, anything that you can give uh, uh, to make a moment, uh, uh, like a different uh, uh, moment and being together, uh, united, it just, uh, it, you, you can make, really make the difference with simple things. Uh, um, just adding something. Thank you, Patricia. Of course, Sticky week next. Uh, Okay, so can I go? Yes. Okay, so I just would like to pose a question um, because I would like to hear from everybody if they have some input. Although everybody has all kinds of reasons why we want to get involved and do the things we do and participate and things like that. But I want to know how any of you encourage those who are kind of uh, gun shy or not actively involved as much, you know, I'm part of a fairly large camp and it feels like I see year after year, it's typically always going to be the same people doing the same things. And I would like to hear a little more about how you encourage, like, a shift from those patterns and habits that people fall into when people kind of rest on their laurels and are accustomed to the infrastructure that happens around them. And then, you know, how do you encourage people to be more involved in volunteerism and more uh, engaged outside of what they've done before or maybe outside of what they know? So I, I would love to hear if anybody has any input on engaging and motivating people in a way that can help them break out of their comforts. That's, and thank you. Of course, thanks, thanks for the question, Kimba. Um, the first thing I was going to say was that, well, not everyone reacts the same way. Not everyone has the same skill set or the comfort levels. So there are some people who are going to be comfortable being the center of attention at a party. And there's some people that are gonna be really comfortable being behind the scenes and editing things and doing things. So playing to people's strengths and encouraging everyone to get involved in their own way. <clears throat> um, you know, not, not all contributions look the same. That being said, I wasn't prepared for the second half of your question, which was how do you get people out of their comfort zones? And uh, I wouldn't want to make, for example, our CFO organize a party because he just wouldn't be good at it. Uh, it's not his skill set. And he's been, uh, there's one person I'm thinking of, uh, he is our camp CFO who has been involved for eight years with New York Dangerous. And I, I wouldn't expect him to do anything other than what he's already done. Um, there's a difference between resting on your laurels uh, and saying, well, I've already done it before. I don't need to do anything else, which is what I can understand would definitely be a problem. 
Um, but if somebody is contributing and being a, a meaningful contributor, I wouldn't necessarily ask them to change for the sake of change. So I'm not sure that I understood the question, is it just to, to get people who are being lazy to be active again? Or is it people who you want for some reason to change what they're doing and make them do something else? Well, in my experiences is that people just, they look to the ones that are willing to do all of these things that are great impactful to the camp right they they kind of rely on the fact that these people do it year after year and I'd like to kind of encourage um, people to not anticipate those things like to kind of want to do more than um, you know by uh, getting out of your comfort I don't necessarily mean do something you are that isn't in your wheelhouse it's just doing more than you've done before right like it, it, sometimes when people get settled into camp dynamics there comes some comfort with that right like there you always have like the leadership uh, the people who take on leadership roles, the people who take on infrastructural aspects, and then there are some that are still mm. kind of gun shy. And I feel like sometimes it's easy for people to feel like um, getting involved is like overwhelming when I, I want to open that conversation up within our camp and, you know, all the all the years culminate with you know people that are there for the first time and people that are veterans have been there you know for decades and so you know outside of burning man i engage people in volunteerism but in burning man it looks completely different and so i thought i'd kind of encourage any ideas or thoughts of how people like get others involved, <laughs> you know, have, without Have just... you considered, I'm sorry, have you considered deputizing some of the people that are a little more reticent? Like if you have somebody that has been a lead, at maybe like a build lead or an infrastructure or power lead for a long time, and everyone counts on them to do it, maybe speak with them and see if some of the people that you thought have been, that could get more involved, be, just ask that person who's the, the established lead to reach out to those people and be like, hey, I'm going to need uh, some help with this project or could you could you learn to do this in case I'm not available mm -hmm. if they reach out and say hey you are needed I'd like you to do this one thing uh, that might be a way to get them involved in an area and it'll also give that person uh, a chance to take a break once in a while yep. I wanted uh, yeah, I, Leo do you want to say something though I saw your hand up oh sorry I think Sticky Beak had his hand up first. So oh, okay. Yeah, it's what I follow up. But I didn't, I didn't want to right. jump in there, but I do. I do have some comments um, from my camp. If he, if he, after he's uh, had a chance. Uh, there you go, Sherman. Yeah, same. I also had a couple of comments from from my experience last year. But uh, Sherman. Oh, please, Sticky, it's Sticky, go for it. I was going to say, actually, if you've got it that it's relevant to Kimba's question, please go ahead because yeah, I have yeah, something um, a little further back. I can fill in later. Absolutely. Um, well, here, I'm going to put this quote, uh, which is one of my favorite quotes on how I think about uh, camp leadership. It's from Antoine de Saint-Jubri, and it's really around how do you get someone inspired about the outcome versus the task? Um, and that outcome could be a, a bunch of different things. And, you know, in our camp, you know, we have such high level achievers in so many ways that like everyone, some people just want to unplug. I just want to be moved. I don't want to do anything. I just want to go as simple as just picking up some moop and like, great, you are Captain Moop. And like, you get them like really inspired about it. Or you have someone that is really interested in being uh, in design, but there's nothing that has no idea about it. And we usually pair them up. Uh, people like working in pairs, I, oftentimes like giving them some camaraderie and like uh, de-risking the project or the task helps a lot. So if they're like, hey, I want to like learn about like uh, composting and you don't have to do composting, well, I'll hook them up with someone in the kitchen and then like, hey, like you guys can talk about how we do meals and compost in kitchen so they can feel like probably brought into the group. Um, you know, one thing that we've struggled with, um, you know, we originally just started as uh, camp 50, 60 people and then we got bigger and bigger until we got became a village. 
And then with his village, we had about like four different camps of varying sizes. And the reason why we became a village was we, we eventually hit this critical mass in our camp where it was just too big. And so we're like, you need to go and start a smaller camp now. Like you're great. Give them like a leadership role, like peel off 20 people and do your own thing within the village. We'll support you in some bigger infrastructure, but like add a new experience, do something new, you know, serve tea or, um, you know, this year was awesome. We had like, um, we had someone like designing butts where like you would like, you know, tattoo butts and like spank butts and like, cause we're bow, it's like buns and has this whole like playful thing. But it was like mainly two dudes that like were with, with us for a bit that just wanted to be in, re-inspired. And we're like, go and just play around. And here's a canvas, here's some spot, here's some resources from the camp budget, like, and, and go do it. Um, I think the problem that we have is if the people that keep doing the same thing over and over again, become burnout, they get like, and they also become salty. I don't know if you've seen it, but like there's this crustacean, like barnacle, like where these old ships and we start grabbing these barnacles and like, they, they almost like take it on this task of like honor, but like, meanwhile, they become this like jaded crusty burner. And you're like, and they're not willing to give control. And like, it, it just, it becomes this thing. So uh, we've done this thing of rotations and that's why we do this camp bow. And like, we try to move people off things and give them some rest so they can like not be burnt out. Um, and like, so those are just some, some tactics that we've used to try to de-risk some of the people that want to do something that may not be in their wheelhouse or people that are uh, a little bit crusty that need, that need some time to try to be reinvigorated again. <laughs> Nice. I want to say in, in Costume Co, we had similar things like all dead leads, had co leads. And then uh, every camp meeting that we had, let's say we had like a general camp, like every team could work whatever way they wanted, but then we'll have like a general camp meeting. And then every team lead will share the projects that they had and the kind of help they were looking for, but not, not always in like a way or more in a way that we will try to get people excited and be like, hey, do you want to learn how to fix speakers? Do you want to like, you know, spend a weekend with a bunch of DJs and sound engineers in Connecticut, like, you know, learning how to weld? And, and we will make like a Facebook event out of it. The, like a fluffer will go, we'll like get some pizza, some refreshments. And, and we will try to get people involved in all sorts of projects. It also makes it so that when you're in Playa, uh, there are less things that are super person dependent. Uh, because uh, the producer might not, you know, get COVID. Somebody might not be there on camp when the speakers break. So when 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 you like make a lot of projects together, you create a lot of redundancy too. So uh, Leon, you wanted to say something, and then we can let a sticky big short question. Wasn't yeah. me. No, I'm I'm listening to everyone else. Oh, sorry, El Leon. Sorry. Oh, yeah. El Leon. <laughs> Is your hand still up? Oh uh, yeah, I'll drop it. I'm I'm still getting used to hands. So. Oh no, it's there. Oh, so you had a um, comment about your camp, yeah. So I'm mayor of a, um, a village of um, anywhere from being 250 to 350 uh, people, depending. Um, and But we're a little bit different in the sense that we don't have the traditional, like we don't have a kitchen or anything like that. So we have just camps that camp with us. We don't have dues. However, we have certain pro stuff that's got to get done. Uh, and do you have like a discussion forum um, pre-event for folks at um, at your um, at your camp, Kimba? Like Discord or something like that? Yeah, so I'm getting roped in this year for leadership. And I'm learning that there are some things, there are like a small subset group that I think does that. But I think I've heard a couple of times here, we need to incorporate a larger like meeting engagement right. platform mm -hmm. or opportunity for all of us to kind of connect in that way. Cause I think that's what's happening. You know, the, the infrastructure guys are all just kind of getting it done. And so naturally people just show up without that engagement and right. that might be part of the problem that's this yeah. is yeah, why having I'm a here. Facebook group, <laughs> yeah having a facebook group a discord even at, depending on the size of your cam of course there's different tools for it and then every individual team has their own you know like coordination and then you if you share weekly updates if you go like it, it gets people encouraged it gets people happy and it, it reminds because uh, uh leon uh, we were saying earlier in the panel too the 
there's people that they don't participate just because they don't know they could be participating or they they might not you know have this confidence yet that their their contribution matter so so if you if you keep this encouragement going it increases the rate of, of participation yeah because we our our website has discussion groups um on it and we post on issues about similar to that like um, just for I'll give you an example, and I haven't dealt with it yet because I'm doing the place camp questionnaire right now. But once that's over, our our leave no trace lead um, can't come this year, and his main assistant can't come this year. Um, so I'm going to have to go on the discussion group and say, hey, um, you know, there's one, and I'm not even sure the other person that was the third backup person is coming because he had some issues last year. So. I may have to go on and I used to be a leave no trace person. So I'm have to go on and put it out there and say, we need no trace people. And we also had some red spots that we shouldn't have had on the move map. So we got some work to do people and who wants to step up. And then if nobody steps up, then I'll then go and start, you know, Hey, I've noticed you've been coming for a few years and would you like to help with this? Um, since we don't have, quite the formality that some of the other camps have. We can't really like, you know, we don't charge dues or anything like that. We can't kick them out of the camp. I mean, we could if there's issues similar to Chairman Bauer talked about. Um, we haven't had those, thank God. Um, so we can't really kick people out. But we found I found people step up if we ask them. Um, nine times out of 10, they'll, they'll step up. Sometimes they'll say, I'm, you know, I'm not really comfortable. Like I had one guy that I asked him to do something. He says, I don't like talking to people. I'm an introvert. So can I go with someone and, and be sort of be there and listen and be their backup and do this other part of the job, but just don't ask me to do that part. But I, I think you'll find if you ask people generally, they'll respond in, in my experience and at least in our camp. Thank you. Yeah, we are actually taking on two other camps and becoming ultra large. So this is all really great to kind of take on these new changes. So thanks. Good luck. Um, sticky week. Okay, yeah, I'll jump in um, and try not to lose my train of thought in the middle of it. So uh, first I will say I am not actually a TCO. Uh, I have never quite been that crazy, although I've helped in senior leadership in a couple of them. Um, I think on the just encouraging volunteers in general, I think there are probably a few principles there that have come out of this. You know, one is start small. Uh, one is uh, invite participation. And another is, you know, celebrate it when it happens. So, for example, uh, with Astral Headwash, you know, it used to be it was all our lead, did everything that would tell everyone what to do, et cetera. Never got out of camp. So one of the things we went to is, OK, we need to develop some extra expertise around this. And we said, yeah, hey. The first thing that we did is say, okay, when you're applying to join the camp, what would you like to get involved in? So you know, there's that invitation right there. And we weren't saying, hey, you have to run the generators. You have to know how to do the entire plumbing system and the pumps and everything else. What we'd say is, hey, look, we just need a backup so that when Bob's not here, someone else knows how to refill the barrels. It's just one job. You teach somebody how to do that and they, they learn to do that. And hey, you know, lead gets to get out of camp a little more. <laughs> But it means you got one or two people who know how to do that, and the next year they can learn a little more. And you celebrate that at the end, and it's it's just a very easy thing, and that celebration makes that connection, and it really you know it gives you that feedback to say, oh yeah, I can do this, yeah, I can take on a little more. So that's a good place to start. Um, you can also do this on kind of a you know stepping out of the inviting people to step up as leadership and volunteers in general. Um, there are places where you can actually introduce that in a camp. Now, not every camp is this way, but for example. Uh, Astro Hydro Wash, what we do is we wash hair. Except the big secret is most of us don't actually wash much hair. Because what we do is people come in to get their hair washed, and there's always a long line for it. So we invite people who are waiting in line to say, hey, why don't you come back and wash a few heads while you're waiting for your turn? And that invites people to come back in. You know, they get to make that connection with people. They get to volunteer. It's a very easy thing to do. It's really meaningful to the person they give it to. And as a result, we get people who come back every year, five days a week, just to volunteer to wash heads. So, you know, you can actually create that within your camp for other people. And that gets people into the idea of, oh, hey, there's something I can contribute. And it can be easy. 
But, you know, that's something to look at. Gee, Sticky Beak, how about a spoiler alert? A plug in here. You want to get people involved in something that's out of camp? They want to get out of camp? A peer shift is about the easiest thing on Playa to do, and it's a lot of fun. So. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. That's so cool. <laughs> Uh, next, uh, Patricia, I think. Yeah, it's just me. Um, I, I, I lost what I was going to say about it because it was like I was like ready before. But um, anyway, so I actually I can give you my suggestion in terms of a, a kitchen lead. Uh, um, I so what we try, what we do all the time, uh, Kimba, is uh, uh, trying to build uh, um, uh, the team before going on playa. Uh, meeting uh, before uh, uh, with you know two events uh, and uh, start to talk. I mean, I'm very passionate about kitchen, so and then I start talking. You know what I do, what I would like to, what I need uh, as a leader. Uh, we need we need uh, you know finding to find the chef every 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 day. We need to have a chef, and then we need to have the leader, the, the chef, the leads uh, other uh, you know volunteers and uh, and. And uh, and you start seeing that you can you can start seeing that you know there are people that are more passionate about about cooking and uh, and what what I do all the time is uh, um, I start to build that team before and then I, I created my uh, Facebook group uh, related to the kitchen and I I start to um, uh, involve them uh encourage them is like and i i also play volleyball 17 years in uh, when i was i was young and uh, so i i love doing teamwork so for me uh it's like a passing the ball to another person and uh, teamwork is the, the 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 perfect way to go uh making us like uh, we're doing this together right um and then you find that you know People they are more passionate about something and more the, you know for other things. Uh, you, the best is starting definitely much more earlier and uh, get to know people and involve uh, as many people as possible. I love that. Thank you so much, Patricia. Um, we have less than ten minutes left, uh, so I wanted to let the oops, I have to the pins. But I think I'm. Oh, I wanna I wanna let you all um, the the panelists now um, use these last ten minutes and Leon to um, you know share some of your conclusions. What have you thought and uh, perhaps some encouragement for this year? Yeah. Um, so we all know how tough it was last year. Uh, I think everyone knows it was tough. Uh, this is a quote that's helped me over the last uh, you know, few months of, of decompression and kind of like looking at what, what's been going on. Um, so this is, uh, you know, we have a huge village. We built probably like, I think one of the largest art cars on Playa. Uh, it was this big iceberg. We did this solar thing. We brought like two more art cars. We went like all out um, last year. And, you know, despite all that happening, it was, um, it was a lot of fun, but it was a lot of work and there's a lot of suffering through the heat and through, through everything that was going on. But at the end of the day, like, um, we all got closer together from it. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. You know, those are the things that we cherish, uh, that like, it would be great to, um, you know, remember why we do it. I think, I think really you got to remember why we're doing it and all the people that we're making happy but also like how you can change it. We all have the power to kind of like direct where this goes. And like, I am, um, you know, and so this year we're actually taking a step back. We're gonna like gonna pull back on the scale. We're going from 150 back to 50 people. We're like tightening up like leadership and like letting people kind of go and start other camps off, uh, off the village. You know, so we're just going back to a camp. Uh, and just trying to go back to basics a little bit, go back to some of the the simplicity of it all. Um, I think there's such a uh, enticement to go bigger and to like do it harder and like to try more and to uh, and, and oftentimes that may not have the the best result. Uh, whereas you know going smaller, more intimate brings back some of the magic that you may have wanted in the in the first place. Um, that's kind of how we're approaching it this year. And then to just recuperate a bit more and um, not have so much overhead. 
uh, Kimbo, when you said you're taking on two more camps, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> this <laughs> is a woman. <laughs> I got like, I know. I, I know. For, you for a moment. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, before you get on plot, you have the ability of saying no and trying to redraft this vision. Listen, I was not part of the answer to taking on the camps. I have just been roped in on leadership to try to use my talents to rope people in better than we have before. Because I think in the past, it's been like, let's, you know, dictate and all these other things. And I, I you all made really great points um, that I am more apt to do than some of the old timers and no offense to anybody, but that's what I call them because they've been doing it for a really long time. And I'm really attempting to call them ugly fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm attempting to get like the, everybody involved and f again, bring your talents. Let's, let's participate. Mm -hmm. So I just love to hear and learn from everybody else. And so I, I can't tell you how great it is to, you know, learn every year as you all do just along with me. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, hopefully come, come visit Sharky's Bar, you know, you can come say Thanks. hi anytime. Thank you. Thank you so much for the words to share about. I think uh, one, one um, small thing that I wanted to remind uh, people too, we have the camp support has also, um, like a mentorship program. So if you're a cam, uh, team cam lead or, or, a, or a team lead inside a team cam and you want to find mentorship, there's, there's ways to find mentorship with, with cam support and the hive. Like, like we are, you know, the same way that you're supporting your cam mates, we are supporting you and then we all support each other. The, um, oh, Leon, you wanna? Oh yeah, I was actually gonna say something. So, um, I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed being part of the panel and hearing other people's uh, contributions. Um, yeah, New York Dangerous is also downsizing. Like I said, we're usually between 70 and 110. Uh, we've been as big as 120, but never bigger. And we also are planning on actively and intentionally downsizing to 50 or 60. So it'll be curious. I guess everyone's going to wind up in Kimba's camp. There'll be like 60,000 people in Kimba's camp and there'll be like 50 in every other camp. That's my guess. Um, also, since we were talking earlier about the, uh, the House of Good Deeds, um, I just figured it, it would be remiss if I let the rest of the day go by without mentioning one thing. Um, in addition to doing community service events, uh, we do have a national uh, day of remembrance, which uh, just so happens to be today, March 18th every year. Uh, it, is, uh, it coincides with the passing of our campmate and uh, my late wife, Yuan. Um, and instead of a uh, memorial, uh, it is a day for people to um, think about others who are no longer in their lives. Um, it's not necessarily volunteerism, but it is community building. So um, if each of you would, not now, but like at some point, just think about somebody that is no longer in your life, either because they've passed or they've moved on in their lives, you have in yours. Just think about a relationship that you had that was important to you and either maybe tell a story to somebody in your own life or share it in whatever way, because um, one of my favorite inscriptions, uh, I, didn't, uh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't copy and paste it into the chat group, uh, but um, it's something which I remembered from visiting my father's tombstone. Uh, the, the, my uncle next to it has on his tombstone, no one ever dies until they have been forgotten. And that's one of the things that has always stuck with me. And um, six years ago, I lost my wife, Yuan, but uh, there are also other people everyone has lost somebody in their lives. And I just think this would be a nice, you know, international holiday of sorts to think about one of those relationships that means something, maybe tell a story to somebody, maybe do something to commemorate it, but uh, in a positive, uh, in a positive way. I just wanted to share that. Thanks, Kimba. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. I think to me, the, 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 the goal of volume tracing and everything that we're doing is, this community at the end of the day, like, like, and I guess we have a reputation for having like big DJs and cool parties, but, but the most important thing that we do is being there for each other. So thank you for sharing. This is like the, um, 
the main reason behind everything that we're doing. And I think um, I really want to thank you, everybody, for for participating on this panel. Your your Insta has been beautiful. Oh, you can say something. You can say it. A little is shy. Let's just. <laughs> Hi, I'm I'm Lily. I'm not part of the panel. I'm I'm David's uh, partner. You are now. Um, I am. <laughs> yes, I've, I've been trying to give him cues. Um, um, and obviously, in a lot of things that he volunteers for, I also, whether I have known that I volunteered for or not, I'm volunteering. Um, but it's it's just so fulfilling. I'm a relatively new burner, and, and you know, having David as a partner has helped me jump into the volunteerism. So I can say sort of on the opposite side of, of your experience, you as veterans, you know, just how welcoming people like you in the Burn community can be. And, um, you know, in such a kind way to encourage that participation, really helping people like me feel like we do have ownership of the experience, that we are helping to create that. And um, that participation uh, value uh, I mean, without fulfilling that, I mean, that, that is volunteerism. It's, it's participating. Um, and um, uh, Leon, um, is that your name? It is. Well, there's uh, two of us on here, both named Leon. I don't know <laughs> which one you're talking to. They burst out Burning Man. You, you uh, today is the day of remembrance, March 18th yes. for, for your wife. Um, yesterday for me, March 17th marks 20 years for me of when I was first diagnosed with cancer. Amazing. So, you know, I will now, and you know, what I gained from that experience early on in my life, because I'm still very young, you know, is just, you know, through all of that pain and healing, that invitation to still, still participate and celebrate life. And that is, that is volunteerism. It's, it's coming to the burn, celebrating life together in whatever way we can, and what a gift that is to share. So, you know, I thank everyone at this panel for what they do, because I think volunteerism is the burn community. It's the community that we all want to create and be a part of together. So thank you. Thank you, Lily. Thanks to you. Beautiful. Thank you. thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. I think that's the most beautiful way to close. I hope to see you all in yeah. Inshallah. <laughs> hope to run into each other at the playa and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thanks for participating. Bye.